because insecurities in our society and in this time have taken on a whole nother form because everything's about winning, we become obsessive about getting what we want. And now we have pills to stop the obsessiveness from happening and it's only because we've gotten far away from our truth. Mm. Life wasn't set up to win or lose. Nobody wins or loses. We're all born. We all go back. It's something we all do. If you really think about life, we come here to go back. Nobody comes to earth to stay forever. Now, I don't know if anyone met anyone who has. I haven't. But we come to live a mission that we agreed to do before we came here. Mm. It doesn't mean we're predestined because earth is all about free will. But yet what we're doing, we agreed that that's what we would do and that's what we would learn. And the situations are set up for to, us to grow our souls and to evolve. And then we go back and take a peek and what feels like 80 years here is five minutes because there is no time but it's slowed down so we can learn the lessons and grow our souls. It's all about learning over and over again. It's about learning. When we lose sight of learning and want to buy the answers, which is pretty much the point at which we're at, then we've lost the lessons and we wonder why we're empty. We walk around going, why can't I feel? And we don't stop to look inside of ourselves to say, well, I took a shortcut here and a shortcut there and I got the car, but I didn't work. I just told the money I did. You know, we don't stop to think what stopped us along the way because we thought that prize was going to solve our issues mm -hmm. and fill that hole, whatever prize it is. But you can't fill a hole with something that's empty. Why do angels speak to people and what do they have to teach us? They actually are reminders. They remind us that we come from God. All angels are, are like flickers of light that if God were to come down and stand in front of you, you would combust because his energy is so great. So he created many, many specks of love, of, of just pure love that surround all of us and carry us while we're here doing this mission, which is in one of the hardest planes of all of them, which is Earth. Because here we have lower energies. And the angels are here to remind us there's a bigger picture. People will say, you know, I fell and I said, oh my God, help me. But people just say that like as a reaction, mm -hmm. but yet they're helped in those times. And they'll say, out of nowhere, you know, something came and did this or lifted me. And you, now we've heard many stories of people who were in car accidents or had slipped and fallen or were in tight situations anywhere and will say something came and then left. And it's only because we asked. We said, God help me. We don't realize how simple it is. We just try to do everything ourselves and we've made things so hard for us to attain. And you know, when we used to see people talk to themselves and we say, oh, you're crazy. Sometimes I say, even if you don't move your lips, mm. use your mind. Mm. Talk to God. He's right there. Talk to Him like you would a friend, because that's who He is. It's hard to tell people that who believe in burning, in hell. And so I said to God, because I know as a Muslim, we, we can burn. And so I said, but why? Would we be getting hurt if you love us so much? Why would you hurt us in the worst way we can imagine? You know what the answer was? Mm. Why would God burn you? He said, ask people, why would I burn you? I love you. He said, hell is the lack of love. When there isn't love around, that's when we feel like we're in hell. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be burned to exemplify that fact. It's the lack of love that we get lost from. Not one person who's had a near-death experience, I don't care who they were across the board, whether they believed in God or not, 
saw anything that hurt them. Mm. We have enough of those experiences documented where I could say, it's not just the angels that I know because I'm nobody special. They're all of ours. There's billions of them. And now they're more visible. There's more people like me getting these messages. I'm not alone. And I'm not any more special than anybody. One of my jobs was to do this, and I resisted quite a bit initially. When I first saw Christ, I was actually upset about it because I'm Muslim. I didn't know what to do with him. I'm like, why did you come to me, and what am I supposed to do? And he told me, and I'm still like, what am I supposed to do? And how? I was told I was an author before I even met Sterling, who, who really started the first book, who put it together. Plan A was that I was going to die with all of this writing in my drawer, and someone would find it and publish these books. Not to mention the list I had of people I would never tell this happened to me. Because I didn't know how to incorporate such love into my life. But we can't take God that's love and turn him into a conditional person that is out to hurt us if we're not okay. Because if we really thought about it, God is with us all the time. I think one of the hardest things to accept initially when I first saw Christ was that I never felt private anymore. I never felt like I had those private moments when you're by yourself and you're like reading or you're watching TV or whatever it is you think you're doing. I always knew I wasn't alone anymore. And that has its benefits and it also has its kind of weird. But you know what happened as a result of that? Mm. I no longer had anything to hide. I figured, shoot, if God sees it, what matters to me if somebody else sees it? <laughs> It really puts it in perspective. Yes, it does.